It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have oh, a hello, and thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. It's a rainy old day here in Wales, and this is where we paint away the stress of everyday life. So, um, I'm going to be painting some grapes. The reasoning behind this particular painting is um, I've had a commission um, for a local um, vineyard, believe it or not. Yes, there are vineyards in Wales. And um, I've had a little, I've had a commission there um, to paint some paintings for a coffee, um, a coffee shop. Uh, this is a 12 by 10 canvas. Now, this is not going to be the size I'm going to paint it. Um, obviously, it's going to be a lot bigger. But I thought, well, I've got to get the design correct before I can take it on to the next stage. So this is just um, like a little proof painting then for myself. So it's gone from a drawing stage into a proof painting. And I'm, I'm going to be doing a few of these coffee cups and bottles of wine and things like that. I may, I may make videos on all of them. I may not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But this is the grapes. This, this, is, this is telling the story of the vineyard. Because you can't have wine without grapes. So... I thought it would be nice if I did that. Anyway, let's get straight on to the palette. Um, you can see I've got a few different colours here today. Um, I want to talk about, I've got some retarder and some flow improver. These can be bought on the website, www.clive5art.co.uk, along with other range of products as well. So I've got some retarder and some flow improver, which I'm going to be working with today. The reason I'm doing that is because I haven't got any medium mix, just plain old tap water. There we are. Water, you get out of the tap. But I would suggest if you're going to use water, boil it first, let it cool, and then that water will keep in a, an, in a container such as this for quite a long time because it's pure water and it's boiled there's no chemicals in that so it's not going to go green and go off so if you're going to use water in your acrylic paintings use boiled cooled or distilled water as they call it distilled water okay i want to move on to some greens um i've got two different types of greens here that i've mixed myself um from the blues uh now you can buy pre-mixed green uh, that's quite a darker green that I've mixed with a little bit of Prussian blue and some yellow ochre. Um, but you can use hooker's green if you want. So hooker's green. Um, this is a, um, a very, very pale green that I've used from that blue, which I'll explain in a moment, and some yellow. Um, but you can go out and buy some permanent light yellow if you want to. This is a very difficult paint to, to actually mix yourself. This is a, a dioxazine purple. And the only way, the only mark maker I know that actually produces this particular one, it's in the Artist Acrylic Range by Windsor & Newton, and it's dioxazine purple. Um, this is quite an expensive paint, but I don't use it very often. So, you know, I, I don't mind spending the, the, the £9 for a tube of paint if I'm only going to use it occasionally. And it's a lovely, 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 lovely purple. Um, but you may be able to make a purple um, to sufficient colour as yourself. So that's dioxazine purple. Um, this is um, a cobalt blue. Um, this, is, this is a lovely warm blue which is used mainly in um, skies and things like that. And again, I don't use a lot of cobalt blue. Um, but I have got some there and I use it for occasions like this because I want to make this look quite pastely. So that's a cobalt blue. Um, this is a, a mid yellow, uh, some yellow ochre. I got some Van Dyke brown, which you can use by mixing a little bit of burnt umber and black together if you want to get a darker brown. If you haven't got any Van Dyke brown, that's burnt umber and Mars black. So if you mix those two together, you'll get a dark brown. So yeah, you can get away with that and some titanium white. Uh, all the paints that I'm using today are uh, Windsor and Newton Galleria acrylic range off the shelf none of these paints are handmade by myself uh, although i do sell handmade paints as you can see i make all my own paints and they're all in the drawer there and they're available on www.clive5art.co.uk but i thought today let's paint off the shelf what you can get off the shelf is pretty good you can buy flow re um, improvers and retarders off the shelf um, and all those paints are readily available um, or use whatever paints your art store actually supply so I'm, I'm looking for quite a pastely effect today so i'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt blue 
and some white. I'm just going to check my sound levels on my on my recording device a second. <coughs> one, two, one, two. There we go. I thought I forgot to turn it on. I think I, I was thinking if I turn my volume on, <laughs> but I did. I'm okay. So let's get some. Let's get some nice blue into this area here. I want to lighten it up. If you use a lot of white, it tends to look a little bit chalky. But in that, in, in this instance, I I want that uh, type of effect. So, but I want a nice smooth tran transition of color as well. Let's get a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more blue down there like this. I'm just going around my outline. And um, I've 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 copied this out. Um, oh, I will have I will have copied this out for you. I will copy this out and put this available on the on the um, shop page for you. www.clive5art.co.uk if you want to pop there and um, download the tracing. It's available. As soon as I finish the painting, I'll let it dry and I shall draw, draw around it and make you a tracing. There you go. I want to make it look quite pastely, like a bit of like like, like maybe a watercolor or something effect. Um, I really do need a blending brush, so I'm just going to find a nice little blender. Um, I'm going to use one of these little um, filbert brushes. That's okay for for blending because I just want to smooth in these these colors together like this. There we are. I want that mixture of color i'm gonna get a little bit of yellow just on the tip of the brush it's gonna go green yes i know but we want a bit of green in there as well we want a bit of green in here now we can add a little bit of yellow over the top of that later on if we want to I want to mix these colours together. A little bit of white. There you go. I wanted to look like um as I said, I wanted to look like a pastely type of watercolour type of effect. That's that's the idea of me mixing these colours um directly onto the the canvas like this and mix in the, the yellow and the blue together and I want to get that transition of color throughout I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue and a little bit more white to my to my brush I want to try and get that to merge in there like this let's get a little bit more light up in this corner now, if, as I said before, if you, if you use a lot of white, you're going to find that your painting can be looking a little bit chalky. But if that's the effect you want, then there's, there's, it's okay. Um, some people don't like that effect, but I, I'm trying to get this to look like a watercolor type of background. Like as if the paint is soaked into the paper. Now, I've got my my heating on today so my paint is drying quite fast so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of retarder onto my my um, brush you can see I'm not using a lot of fluid or water or acrylic um, not acrylic um, retarder and stuff I'm gonna very lightly go over that area there because I don't want to lose my drawing. I've drawn directly onto. I've drawn directly onto canvas, with a pencil. So. You can do that. I've gestured the canvas twice, as I normally do. Um, I just wipe in my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of yellow just on on my brush just to get a little bit of that green effect in there like that because that could be a very very distant type of green area that's coming off these 
bit of contamination and celebration. There we go. Let's get a bit of darker green now. I want to get some darker green in down here. Notice the way I'm actually using the brush. I'm not I'm not painting like this. I'm not painting like that. I'm actually scrubbing the brush in. I'm using the advantage that I got with the um the gesso there. Because it's a lovely texture. Um if you've gessoed your canvas correctly, you, you'll find there's a lovely texture there. And if I go over this very lightly like that, it's going to pick up it's going to pick up some of the texture of that canvas as well. Um that way what I'm doing then is I'm creating this watercolour on paper type of effect. So I'm just gonna wash that brush very quickly. Just in straight into some water, straight onto my kitchen towel. I'm going to pick up some yellow because I don't want to, I want to try and maintain the brightness of this yellow. Let's mix in a little bit with our blue, which is what I wanted to do. There we go. Nice, and let's get a little bit of yellow just down in this area. Like that. I could represent, as I said, some other vine bushes and or vines, as they say, um, at the back there. Let's get a little bit more. Light blue down there. And we'll put another coat of that on there in a second. Again, I'm washing my brush. I'm just going to put my blender into some water because I don't want it to dry on me. And... Um, as I said, I've got the heating on in here today, so it's quite warm. Um, I'm going to pull some yellow across and bring some white to it. Not only am I going to lighten that yellow now, but I'm going also going to make it a little bit more on the opaque side, which is going to be coming in over there. I'll lighten that up a little bit more in a minute. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre. Just around there like that. Mixing a bit of that in there. Get wonderful colours all merging together. Making this pastely type of effect let's get a little bit more white into that area I want this to brighten up a bit there there we go nice um, I want to I want a definite white area here very bright just to balance that air off. And as I move in, as I'm moving into this area, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of yellow ochre now, just to warm up an area. I love yellow ochre. I think it's a wonderful color and used a lot in skin tones as well.
and I love red wine too. <laughs> I'm hoping to have a few bottles for free. As I said, these are going to be, I don't know, 20 odd inches, 24 inches, big canvases. So this is just a little test um, paint that I'm doing just to to get the feel for this this piece of work. Um, I just want to get that idea of of a watercolour that we got. I want to put some yellow in there now, don't I? That's the trouble when you talk too much sometimes. You, you can lose track. So I'm looking at this. Um, already I think I need to warm this section up a bit. bit more yellow in there. It's about a nice balance. I think maybe, maybe. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry that with a hairdryer. And I think I'm going to just lean over the back there and turn off my heater because it's quite hot. <laughs> Let's dry this off first though. Okay, so I dried that off. I've switched my heater off because it's, whew, it's getting a bit warm in here. It really is. Um, and I've I've just um, given my brush a quick swell. This is that um, little blending brush. So what I want to do now is just get some plain old tap water. And I get some really wishy-washy, really wishy-washy acrylic. Now, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to thin down acrylic like this because... There's a possibility it can flake off and give you problems. That's why, that's why I use my my medium mix in the studio. No, I haven't put that on the palette today, which is available at www.clive5art.co.uk. But you can do this if if you varnish the painting later on, then it shouldn't give you too much of a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a very, very thin wash of colour just over this painting. I haven't done anything in there. Look, I've noticed, just noticed now, they didn't put any paint in there. So I'm going to have to, I'll work on that in a second. A very, very thin coat of paint over the painting like this and that's just going to give a lovely glaze of color and give that nice blue type of water effect that I'm looking for will I use this method in the larger painting I don't know um, I'm just experimenting at the moment to try and get um, the effect that I want and, and this is a good thing if you're going to be doing commissions um, and I don't say that if you've got a pet commission, a pet portrait or, or something like that, then, you know, I'm saying in, in, in this type of instance, where it is, this is more about um, a still life or um, like a design, like a teacup or something like that. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to play around with a couple of ideas first. You can do, you can, you know, if you want to play around and do some little uh, paint sketches and things, um, you can do that if you've got portraits and, and things like that. You, these little study paintings um, really, really work really well. And it just gives you a feel for what the finished painting is going to actually look like. Um, so I'm just going to wash that brush a little bit because I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre now. There you go. I just put my brush into a little bit of retarder there. Because I, I I can feel my brushes um, my paint is drying very quick, so I just put a little bit of retarder onto my onto my brush, and I'm just going to warm this section up with a bit of that um, wonderful yellow ochre. And study paintings, um, yeah, definitely, definitely try and do a couple. Um, don't go just running straight in and and trying to do a portrait or or something like that. You know, always do some little studies first. Just to get a feel, especially portraiture is um, is a, a place where I do that quite a lot. If I was going to do a portrait of someone, I would tend to 
do a few study paintings first because what it does it, it, it gets you to get muscle memory for that face or character whatever you are painting it, it, it helps you helps you build that um, the sense of that person up so I'm just gonna use a little bit of this lighter color I want to I want to go in there a bit lighter there we go lighten that area up again Use a nice soft brush, just trying to blend that in there like that. I want a bit of a, a lighter area in there now. Using quite a thin paint. And it's okay for this instance. And if I was going to do this on a larger canvas, then I would definitely um, varnish it, which I most probably will do. I most probably will do. But I want to get this. area nice like that where, where did I say it was in you wasn't it so let's get a little bit of that blue and let's build some blue up in there there you go Let's merge it together. Let's get a little bit of that green. I got a little bit of light green there in there as well. Just to lighten this up a bit. There we are. I'll build that up again in a second, but for the moment I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. I want to put a little bit more um yellow down in this area, I think. trying to merge it like that and blending that in looks like pastels looks like a pastel color just I want that texture that canvas to come through as well like as if it's a watercolor effect it's quite a nice vivid looking um, painting now I think so I'm going to dry that again with a hair dryer. Make sure it's really bone dry this time. There's a hair there. Sometimes you can get a hair trapped um, on your painting, so be careful. Okay, I'm going to dry that. I'm going to give it I'm going to, again. I'm going to give it two minutes, two to three minutes, and to air dry because I'm going to nip, make, nip in, make myself a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, right. I've just run in and made myself a nice cup of tea. <laughs> You always take a break. I always take a break, and I'm 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 not one of these um, people who will turn around and say I've just painted this straight on. You know, it's taking me an hour, and I am stopped. Of course, I stop. I'm a human being. And what I try to show you is sometimes it's better just to take a little break, clear your mind, clear your your eyes, let your eyes rest a little bit, and um, and then and then jump straight back in. So we're going to get some of this dark green or hooker's green. Um, whatever whatever green you got you want you want quite a dark green um, to get to get going here so let's just have a look at these let's have a look at these these leaves these leaves and this is just the first coat because we're going to put some more paint on top of this in a minute so these these leaves have got a nice little pointy bit on them look a bit like um like a maple tree in in fact so this is just layer building is um, a, plays a big part in um, plays a big part in acrylic painting. There you go. I just enjoy. I just enjoy painting um, with acrylics. Uh, I've been asked um, on a couple of occasions and. How long have you been painting with acrylics? Well, acrylics I've been painting, it's got to be eight, nine years now. And it took me, I would say, a good three years to be happy with them and think, yeah, you know, 
I, I've got the grips of them now. And um, the rest of the time, the other six years, is, is just a matter of improving and learning and what can you mix with them and how can you get them to work for you. And that's the key. That's the key. How to get them. I'm going to add a little bit of white. It's, like it's a little bit dark for my liking. Don't forget acrylic's dry two shades darker. So You can see that um, this green and that green are very similar. If I added a little bit more yellow to this green, uh, it would be roughly that colour. Look, see? So that's just basically a hooker's green and white to get to that colour. So you add a little bit of yellow to it, then you'll get around about that colour. So learn to learn to um learn to paint uh, learn to mix your colors learn to paint your mixes <laughs> learn to <laughs> learn to um mix paints that's a better green i like that green it's more pastely it's not so hard it's not so hard on the eye i'm not looking for perfection in this i'm just looking for colors that i'm going to be using throughout the the main painting Actually, I might use a little bit of that peppermint green in in here as well. I don't know why I call it peppermint green, but it looks like a peppermint to me. Allow each layer to dry. Really, really do allow each other, a layer to dry. Now, I've run out of greaseproof paper onto my palette. So I'm using this like wax type of paper on my palette. Um, you know these artist um, pads you can buy in the art shop. You put your thumb in and you can hold it in your hand and mix it. And it's like a paper palette. They call it a paper palette. Well, this um, stuff is all that is. There we are. You can go out and buy some of this freezer paper. And this is in a big roll, five meter roll. It was very, very, very cheap, available on eBay. Um, and I use that, I'll just put that up there. I've used that today, and it's like one of those wax pallets you can buy. And you'll pay a fortune for them things in the art shop. You will. So if you can get hold of some of that freezer paper, I highly recommend, highly recommend it. But what it does do, it does tend to dry a little bit quick on the wet palette this is why i like um, the baking paper or greaseproof paper or parchment paper instead B parchment paper is um is much better for you because it retains more moisture into the paper itself still allows for the the paint to stay moist rather than dry where there's the the wax paper i've just showed you has got a tendency of allowing the paint to dry too much because it's got a wax a wax type of coating on it it's got a tendency of it's got a tendency of drying more there you go let's just get some Let's just get some contrast in these leaves there, like this. I'm going to be going on an Easter egg, egg hunt shortly with my grandson, so. And I know exactly what he's going to want to do. He's going to want to make me, he's going to want to make a video, so. Maybe I'll take some photographs and. and a video because where we're going to go is is uh, is an old old manor house um down towards the cardiff area it's called the dufferin gardens it's uh some wonderful it's a wonderful place i remember going there when i was a child in fact so it may be a good idea to might be a good idea for me to um just mix a couple of those two colors together maybe um I can take some pictures and things and of the gardens or the house or something and maybe bring them paint that. Anybody like to see me paint a structure like um, a church or 
a house or something like that. I like churches. I do like churches. I got a wonderful church and just uh, not far from where I am and my mother used to play the organ um, on the services in the church and I've been meaning to, I've drawn the church, I've, I've drawn the church, but I've never actually painted the church and um, it seems to be, it would be a good challenge and it'd be a, a good, a good vil lesson I think because it would teach a little bit about how to paint masonry and stuff. So we want this to be a bit lighter, so let's get some white. I want this because this is going to be a little bit lighter in the background there. That's a little bit too pepperminty. Let's add a little bit of that darker green into it. That looks a bit better. There you go. Can you hear that rain coming down here today? And It's quite loud. It's going pit the pit to pit the pat on top of the roof. Let's concentrate in just a little bit. It's a massive, this is a like a mass of leaves here. Don't know where one starts and one ends, but let's just get a little bit of darker colour in there like that. There we go. When you're doing a study like this, um, especially if it's for a larger painting or something, then it allows you to play with a couple of different ideas. You know, you can move things about. You think, oh, I'm not really happy with that by there, but, you know, I, I can move that about, and I can move this about, and, you know, it, it gets you into that mindset as well. Once you've painted it once, it's much easier to, much easier to paint it again. I did a horse, um, in Moonlight, which is available on the iCard there, if you want to know how to paint a horse, that's where to go. Um, and that was a painting that I did. And I repainted it, and I thought, yeah. And it just allows you to, once, you, once you've painted it once, it's easy. You paint something a couple of times and you'll be surprised how, how much easier things become. You get muscle memory. And you make a mistake and you think, oh, I won't do that again. And you don't. And that's what, that's what patience and, and learning is all about. It really is. Okay, so um, I'm going to get some of that green. I'm going to bring a bit of um, uh, burnt number to it. Make a lovely brownie colour because I want to bring in some of this vine like this and find little bits of We'll find some twists and turns into this in a minute. But for not now, let's just establish the let's just establish that vine. There you go. I'll put a bit more colour on that in a second. Washing the brush. Van Dyke Brown. 
you notice I haven't used a lot of water. I've been using my flow improver or my my retarder. So you bear you need to bear that in mind as well. This is the main vine that's coming down like this. There you go. <coughs> Looks good. Just establishing this this vine and that one comes out. Around there. And it goes around in a little spinny type of because it twists, yeah, they coil like this and, and they find they find a stick or something and they, they attach themselves and they and they wrap themselves around in a little coil like that and, and they hold themselves in place and then the vines grow out and and that supports the, the the plant to have um its fruit and this is what this little thing is it's it's one of them little it's one of them little vine things that that are floating around trying to find a home trying to find a home to to attach itself to there you go Like that. Just enjoy the shapes. Just make that shape up. Like that. There you go. Let's make that shape up. How are we looking? Looking pretty good. Let's put another one. Let's put in. There's another one in the back here. So. Let's put that one in there like that. That's going up there. And I'm going to play with that in a second as well. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, have, a, have a little sip of tea and um, think about my, my fruit. Let's have a look at some of this purple and some blue. If we add the cobalt blue and the purple together, we're going to get a wonderful, wonderful colour. I'm just going to put in a couple of darker ones first. Maybe put the shadows in like this in between. Because you're not going to see that in there because it's so dark. But we use some of this. Lovely blue and dioxazine purple that we mixed just to give us the the depth into these grapes that we're looking for. Now these are all little tiny these are gonna be all little tiny spheres, isn't they? So we need to make some light. We need to we need to make some light there. And we need to make some darker. So I'm just gonna get some white. We need to make some of these lighter. And some darker areas as well. 
So let's start working on these grapes, I think. So I'm going to get two brushes. I think I've got two brushes. i got two detail brushes I've got. i got number six with a medium colour on and a number six with a dark colour on. And I'm going to use two brushes and blend these two colours together. Like that. A bit more blue over there, a bit more white. And a couple of different colours. I don't forget you don't want to spend too much time on on this type of painting because this is just a study but you want to get that you want to get it look nice you might you might be able to sell a study um, I have been actually been known to to sell a study as well if you want to spend time on if you want to spend time on your study before you move into the main painting, then you can sell the study. You can sell it as a study painting. Or you, and don't forget, you can also, if you don't sell the rights to that painting, so if I was to take this to the cafe now and, you know, I've still got the right as, as the artist to. to sell copies of that um, if they want to buy the the rights to that particular painting and say you can't reproduce this you know this is an exclusive to us then no obviously you can't and you can't reproduce it and you can't sell it because it actually becomes their property and not yours even though you are the artist, you've sold the rights to that painting and um, and there's nothing you can do about it. But if you haven't done that, then there's nothing stopping you making a copy of that painting and you could alter it a little bit and sell it on or you can just sell the print. Depends what agreement you've got with the people you were actually selling that to. Now, pet portraits obviously are a little bit different because that pet is their pet. It's not commercially available. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not like a bunch of grapes or a coffee cup or anything like that. Then, you know, you wouldn't sell that on But with things like this, then there's no problem at all in you selling that image on as a copy or to someone else as well. It depends on what agreement you've come up with with the purchaser. So we'll always remember that. It's 
time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Don't forget, grapes are not always perfectly round. <laughs> they, they can be oval, they can be different shapes. I mean different shapes, they can be squishy. So don't assume that they're all going to be round, because they're not. Buy a bunch of grapes, use them as your reference. We can push some shadows and things into these grapes as we we proceed. I'm talking about Squishy grapes, we'll put a squishy grape in in a minute. I can hear the birds singing. That's a good sign. We need to stop raining now. My mixing up my brushes now. I think what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it's going to take me quite a while to get these grapes in. So I think I'll speed this process up and then I'll I'll leave uh, maybe that section alone and then we'll come back to that after I've done all all those there. Does anybody know what a bunch of grapes is called? I'll answer your question just after I uh, come back after speeding this up. So enjoy the little bit of music and. Um, Hopefully that you can you'll you'll be able to see more what I'm doing rather than me explaining so you can see it build up.
sorry I had to speed that up a little bit, but as you can see, it it took it took it takes so long, and and I don't like really you know repeating myself, and and besides the fact that I f I I run out of things to say, <laughs> so I left a couple of ones on the side, which I'm gonna pick up some dioxazine purple now, and I'm just gonna go in to some dark. And I'm going to paint these in exactly the same way as I painted the others, just to give you an idea of what you may have missed if I speeded up a little bit too much. Because sometimes these speeded up paintings uh, are okay, but you you can't learn from them, I don't think. So this side of the um, the grape, I got a brush in my mouth. Don't do that. It's not good. But um, it's going to be quite dark on here, so I'm going to get some dioxazine purple, and I'm going to put some nice dark purple underneath there. And think of this as a, a sphere. Now, if you've never painted a sphere before, and you want to know how light falls on things, then there's a little video in the iCard there if you want to pop along and have a look at that. So I'm just switching over my brush. I got one brush with a lighter paint on, one brush with a darker paint on. And now I'm just going to blend this paint in and I'm I'm painting in a way of in in a like a circular type of motion just to get those brush strokes. Cuz if I went straight across I like got it would be flat. So you you want to try and get this feeling of of a grape. Again, switching back over to the a darker brush now and I'm just going to blend in and slowly blend in some of that darker colour into the top there. This dioxazine purple is a wonderful colour. It's a nice dark purple. It makes it great for um, grapes and stuff. I find anyway. A little bit of that lighter colour back on that lighter brush now. Just to get that circular type of look. So it's darker slightly underneath. It's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. We put a little bit of highlight on these in a minute. <coughs> right. I can add a little bit more blue to the purple. Because I wanted this a little bit bluer. Again, I'm just going to pick up some darker areas. Using the brush. Trying to get that. Just off perfect circle. Again, picking up the light. Don't forget it's going to be darker in there and lighter on the edge. That's what creates the depth. Is the light. Picking up a little bit of darker purple now because we want to put a darker bit there and around there like that. Back into my lighter brush. It's going to be light on the edge because it's catching a little bit of light. Let's get that shape. There we are, it looks quite nice. Maybe a little bit lighter there. And then we get the nice dark circle in here. Now the way the light is falling on this one is it's going to have a shadow from that one, it's going to have a shadow from that one, and it's going to have a cast shadow from that one. So what we need to do is Put a bit of highlight just on the edge there, where it's just catching the light. And just move a little bit of paint just around like this. Maybe, maybe just a little bit lighter. Just on that one edge. And then moving those shadows down. Into the darkest dark area there. A 
that just gives you an illusion of a grip there you go so we can put my brushes down for a minute <clears throat> i can pick up some thinner diazooxacene purple now and I'm, I'm i can concentrate on maybe putting some darker areas just to define some of this shape you don't want to put a lot of this in because you can destroy it it's the same with highlights you don't want to put a lot in and don't forget as I said this is just a a steady painting of a larger painting I'm going to be doing so the bigger these grapes are the easier this is going to be for me to paint but I'm just getting an idea and this is what I'm going to be this is what I'm going to be working from this is my reference I've put a little bit of green in there as well I don't know if you've noticed I don't want everything looking perfect um, so I'm adding some white into this purple color and I'm looking at looking at some little bits of highlight now maybe just catching on on a few, few of these grapes just it just gives it a little bit of dimension not a lot you don't overdo this don't want to overdo this wash that brush going into some off-white now I don't want a bright white I want an off-white and again just catch a few spots That's going to be enough for me to to work from. So it looks looking quite nice. It's it's catching a little bit of light. Let's put a little bit of light catching there, and maybe a little bit there. There we go. Give my brush a really good wash. Um, not happy with that area there, but before I get to that, I'm just going to go into my green. Um, I'm going to pick up some white. You can see my 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 green, uh, my white is very very contaminated. So, but that's okay. I'm going to see if I can get some little lines in like that, just to maybe represent some little vines not vines what they call these then little little arteries then little arteries of the leaf you know you know what I mean I don't know what they call these things it just sets it off just a touch Breaks the leaf up a bit. Use a thinner brush, but as I said, this is this is just a study. This is not a finished painting. But if you want it to be a finished painting, then it can be. That's good also. So I'll bring some. Highlight into that, like that. Nicely done. I'm gonna get some burnt umber, a little bit of moisture. You can see I have not used a lot of um, a lot of moisture today. And I just want to darken up this main. Vine. I'm leaving a little bit of a lighter colour underneath. There you go. I like the way that is just 
flicking in like that. There we go. A little bit of that blue on that burnt ember. Uh, just my, my headset's falling off. <laughs> um, just to get a little bit of highlight coming through maybe. Like that. Just a little bit of light. Just falling on. It's fine. There you go. I could get a little brush and just pick up a little bit of blue and white and hopefully I'm going to try and repair this section because if I was just going to if I was going to use this as a painting then that's what I would do there's no point in me leaving it now because you might want to leave this as a, you might want to do this as a painting, so where it is to me is just a little study of some grapes on a vine, which I'm doing for a commission on a larger canvas. And as far as the study is concerned, I'm quite happy with the way that is. I hope that you've enjoyed joining me in the studio today, watching me paint some grapes. Please go along and try give this a try. The tracing is on the website www.clay5art.co.uk and um, just give it a shot. And if this is the first time you've actually watched one of my lessons, please subscribe using the subscription button down there. Or there's a little um, button over there to go to Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You can support me or onto my website. So um, I want to leave you with this fantastic bunch of grapes and um, I will see you next time. Bye. Nice.